about one in every 70 women will get ovarian cancer in their lifetime. And this is in contrast to breast cancer, which as you know is much more common. As many as one in nine women now are getting breast cancer. So it's relatively uncommon, uh, but of the 22,000 women who develop ovarian cancer every year, about 14 or 15,000 are going to die. The conventional way to diagnose uh, ovarian cancer is usually after a woman comes in with a complaint. She may have abnormal bleeding, but more commonly she may just have some uh, feeling of, of unease, you know, she has a feeling of bloating or some other type of abdominal symptom. And then the diagnosis would routinely be made by uh, doing uh, some kind of imaging, such as an ultrasound or a, um, or a CAT scan, if you will. But often, it, in the end, the diagnosis is made by uh, simply uh, laparotomy or surgery where the tumor is then discovered. A small percentage of the population are born with a mutation in one of their two BRCA1 or BRCA2 genes. Women who are born with these mutations have a much greater risk of developing breast or ovarian cancer in their lifetime. Uh, and it may be as high as 80% for breast cancer for some of these genes and, and as high as 40% for ovarian cancer. So in general, if a woman is known to have the mutation, uh, it is recommended that she consider having her ovaries and fallopian tubes removed around age 40, because at age 40, the risk begins to, to accelerate that she might develop ovarian cancer. It will reduce the risk of ovarian cancer by about 90%. Other things that can reduce risk, though, may have nothing to do with genes per se, at least as we know it. For example, you can reduce the risk of developing ovarian cancer. Uh, a woman can if she has multiple births or she gives birth to multiple, you know, multiple times during her life. For some reason, that reduces the risk. Women on oral contraceptive pills have a reduced risk of ovarian cancer as well as breast cancer. Women who uh, have breastfed apparently have a lower risk. Even tubal ligation, which of course is a sterilization technique, for some reason reduces the risk of developing ovarian cancer. So these are uh, other, uh, other factors that do influence cancer risk over the lifetime. We developed a protocol in, in, around 2005 for, for examining the fallopian tubes of women uh, to see if we could identify the origins of ovarian cancer. Well, we came to the conclusion that if uh, some of these tumors might be starting from the fallopian tube, they would more, more likely start in the distal part of the tube, which is the end of the tube. And this is called the fimbria. And so in, in 2005, we developed this protocol called the CFIM protocol, which is very simply paying more attention to the distal part of the tube when we examine the tubes in these women. We published this work and, and just about everybody else in the business, you know, in, this, in the pathology uh, field, began to use this protocol for evaluating the fallopian tubes in women uh, who had BRCA mutations. And what they discovered, uh, as we all did, was that out of every 100 women who undergo this prophylactic procedure, from 5 to 10 percent will prove to have a very early cancer in the fallopian tube. We then applied the same technique or the same protocol to women who came in with you know, symptomatic cancer. And we found um, what we thought was a credible starting point in maybe 50 percent of those cases. I would emphasize the tumor we're talking about here is the so-called high-grade serous carcinoma. Uh, there are other cancers that clearly start in the ovaries, such as endometrioid cancers or, or certain other types of cancers. Uh, what is the, the greatest interest now? Do you take, is, should we take the entire fallopian tube out of women when we have the opportunity? So for example, a woman is coming in to have a benign uterine tumor taken out. So they take out her uterus and let's say she's 45. And, and at that age, she wants to keep her ovaries. So what they would uh, do in a case like this is consider removing just the fallopian tubes. So her uterus and fallopian tubes would be taken. And the reason the fallopian tubes would be taken would be specifically to reduce her risk of developing ovarian cancer. But retrospective epidemiologic studies of women who've had their fallopian tubes removed by themselves, in other words, they do studies where they find populations where this is done, have shown about a 50% reduction in, in ovarian cancer risk. Uh, the research that we're particularly interested in as pathologists is to really try to understand where all of these high-grade cancers come from. So we continue to do studies uh, to carefully, you know, to carefully um, 
examine the ovaries and the fallopian tubes in women who've got these cancers looking for other sources of, of tumor origin. Uh, and that's uh, a central theme of our work. We're also doing work uh, looking for additional risk factors that might uh, be found in the fallopian tubes. We're also looking for early detection um, opportunities in the fallopian tube or, or even by examining um, uh, other parts of the GYN tract to see whether or not one can identify risk or risk-associated um, biomarkers.